Well, as you can see today, it's overcast, it's windy, it's swelly, it's a really yucky day, but being out here on the headland, just overlooking the ocean, it's it's crazy, it's just, it's, it's actually amazing, but I thought I'd take this time to run through a dive Wade, Kel and I had a few days ago, which was pretty interesting, a lot happened, and if you follow my Instagram, you might have already saw a few things that we're on there, <laughs> but definitely got the heart racing a little bit. So we went up the coast pretty early in the morning. I was driving and we planned on going one place. None of us have really dived before. I know Wade had dived at once, but really shallow. So it doesn't really count. We, we wanted to properly dive all the way out as far as we could basically, because it's meant to be really good diving. So we rocked up there, checked the visibility. It looked really good. It was flat as, as you can see, blue skies, blue water, and we we were frothing. To get to this place, it's a, it's probably a couple kilometer walk along this really just shit sand. Like you just sink into it no matter where you walk, and it's it's really hard. But we were determined to get there. We were walking, and we saw a tinny that was washed up on the beach. I think it was either plastic or or wooden, but it was a fair sized tinny. I don't know how it got there, but we had a look at that. Then we kept going. And when we got up to the headland, looking out onto the ocean, it just looked like, it just looked amazing. Like we knew straight away that some good fish were gonna be speared today. Looks good. It's a bit windy, but it looks very clear. Looks like there's gonna be some good fish shot. I got into the water first and it, it was nine out of ten visibility I reckon there was just fish fish life everywhere and I did a couple dives to check out the viz to do a bit of burly put some burly in the water track some fish basically just have a look have a look around for some drama or something Kel managed to get the first fish he skewered a big black drummer probably around 40 to 45 centimeters it was really fat would have been a good feed for him it's because he's coming up in this the spear's just gone all the way through the fish, and which makes it hard sometimes to get the uh, get the spear out of the fish. But you know, straight through the head, it's better than going straight through the fillet. Anyway, we went out a bit deep. I managed to get a nice brim. I dived down, and I used the weed that was on the side of the reef to kind of camouflage me as the school of brim went past. And I managed to hit a nice brim. I find brim are one of those fish where you kind of need to, a lot of the time you need to kind of throw sand up or be hiding in the weed or the rocks to actually get a good shot on them because they're pretty skittish fish, pretty shy and really flighty. When they do get spooked, they kind of just piss off. After I got that brim, I put him on my float line and a couple more minutes went past and I saw a nice drummer. So what I do when I see drama is I just chase them like I swim both arms with my spear gun in your hand, kick as fast as I can, make as much noise as I can because what this does is it scares the drama into a hole. Usually they just go underneath the rock which and they'll they'll look out. They'll look out, try and see if you're there or not. So after I've got my breath back, I took a nice dive all the way to the bottom and I'm just looking under the rock where I saw him go under. And as I was saying, he showed his head, boom straight through the head and that was, a, that was a good shot on him and I reckon there was two drummer in this hole because when I, Wade and I both agreed that we saw a big black drummer go into underneath this rock and when I brought it up it was a good size, it wasn't huge but it definitely wasn't the drummer that I was chasing so it sucked a little bit but in the end I got a good shot on a nice eating fish so I wasn't complaining. This is where the interesting part happened alright so what I do with most fish is I'll kill them straight away as quick as I can 
and then I'll bleed them. Bleeding makes, some people think it makes the fillets taste better. I bleed all my fish just to get the blood out, make them weigh a little bit less. And yeah, just I reckon it makes the fillets taste better. I was bleeding the fish and I heard Kel yell out shark and I thought maybe it was just a grey nurse or something. So I swam over to him with the fish and it was a pretty solid bronzy. And I picked up on this and it was acting really weird. It was kind of, it was moving really fast and most of the sharks I see in the water, they move moving really slow, really chilled at the bottom of the water. This shark was moving really aggressively. It looked like it was kind of trying to shake off the fish that was following him. And yeah, I didn't like the look of that. And I did pick up on that and I said to Kel, That's a solid bronzy, but it's looking pretty like agitated as well. As the sharks swam away, I kind of thought, oh yeah, like we see sharks, not regularly, but every now and then, usually they're not a problem. I've only had a couple, well, I've only had one proper run in with a shark before this. Right down there, actually. <laughs> so I put the fish on the float line. Didn't really think much of it, but like we knew the shark was there. We were just hoping that it kind of didn't really annoy us. We didn't annoy it, so it won't annoy us. But that wasn't the case. So what happened, this is the really kind of cool scary part and I didn't even record it which I'm kicking myself in the head for it because both the shark encounters that I've had like proper shark encounters I haven't filmed and I just want to get a proper shark encounter on camera just oh, but I didn't film it so I'm, I'm telling you guys what happened but basically I was swimming out to sea basically not for anything but I had my back towards land basically so I had my back towards where the shark went and I heard Kel just yell like he was like Harry! like I've never really heard him yell that loud and I just turned straight around because like it scared the shit out of me and about three meters away this 2.5 to 3 meter bronze whale the one we saw earlier was just charging towards me it was so close I had no time to react no time to start my camera I just kind of almost curled up in a ball I put my hands up like this and my legs out with my flippers on like that and I think me, my tiny bit of movement scared the shark. I think it was coming towards my fish, which was only a few meters behind me because I just put it on. And as it got scared, it turned and got stuck in my float line and then opened its mouth and just destroyed my float line. It didn't actually end up getting the fish. And that's where I started recording. As the shark went away, I was like, what am I gonna do? Like, it's got, it's stuck in my float line. And I was just about to unclip my gun where it broke my float line and I was just, I was in panic mode then. I was stressed out, like I, I was swearing and everything. Yeah, that was scary. It, it ended up breaking my float line straight in half. I got through the PVC part into the float line, the actual line itself, as its teeth basically just destroyed that part and it snapped off somewhere on the string. But as you can see, this part here connects to my gun. It's only about hardly three meters to where it first connected to my float line. And that's the crazy part about it. It was so close to me and it was in an aggressive mood. Must've just been hungry. Both the shark encounters I've had were not going for me, but going for my fish and I've kind of gotten their way. Yeah, it's put me in the line kind of. So it was, it was scary, man. As soon as the shark pissed off, I was so bummed that I didn't get it on video because I wish I could just somehow show people what I saw. Like, it was scary. I have a lot of respect for sharks. I don't, I don't think we should mess with them or kill them. I, don't, I try not to eat any flake because I just think we need them in the ecosystem. Sometimes they're obviously going to be angry just like any animal. Every time I go into the ocean, I have to accept that something might go wrong, you know? Luckily, nothing too serious happened and all that happened was I just have to buy a new float line and I lost one fish in the process of that the brim but it definitely shows that like seeing the sharks behavior is kind of an indication of what's going to happen you know if they're chilled they might just swim off they're not interested but if they're acting like hungry or angry you need to be more wary I guess we went in real shallow just tried to get a few more fish we didn't get anything I saw a Cuttlefish. I think that it thought that it was camouflage. I couldn't see it, but it realized quickly that I could see it. And 
pissed off underneath that rock. So we got in, and as you can see, my float line's pretty messed up. We packed up, I think I left half my wetsuit on, and we were determined to go for another dive because we were so unsatisfied about that dive. I had one fish left, Kel had one fish, and Wade had no fish, so we decided to go up the coast a tiny bit to a little island that neither of us, none of us had dived before, so we thought that would be a good experience. Kel was a bit tired, a bit knackered, so he stayed in. Wade and I are gonna go for another dive out of the island out here. Kel's gonna have a sleep because he's pretty buggered. But hopefully it'll be all right. Hopefully you can catch something this time. And the viz was still amazing. Like, even though the wind had picked up a bit, the viz was still very good. Probably about eight to nine out of 10 for me. There's a few fish around, a lot of salmon. I definitely noticed a lot of salmon, like probably the most salmon I've ever seen in one spot. Like just everywhere, biggest school I've ever seen probably. And I just could not manage to shoot one. I had a few shots, but just missed every time. <laughs> that got a bit annoying, so I dived down looking for a few lobsters and I saw a nice drummer, so I went back down with my gun and lined him up nicely and got another drummer to take home for the freezer. Uh, we did end up eating it that night. It was really nice, some fish burgers, mum and I. But that's all I got to drummer during the day. Wade picked up a couple nice salmon, uh, a couple nice drummer. I think that's it. It was a good day, seeing new things, diving some new spots, getting a couple fish, diving some good visibility. All in all, a good day. I got a few experiences to tell people. And yeah, it was just, it was a good day. I did end up doing a catch and cook. I did it in the uh, kitchen at home. I won't put that in, it's just not really me, you know, to do something at home. I like getting out there, just being in nature more. I'm not too serious about cooking. I'm not gonna do some Gordon Ramsay on that lobster or anything, you know. I'm just, I'll just do it for fun. I mean, to get a feed out of, really. This was obviously something really different to what I normally do in terms of catch and cook or something else, vlog kind of style, but I'd rather do something like this than not post the video at all because I want to show anyone who can't experience the ocean as much as I can what I experience really each week. I really enjoy creating these videos. I really appreciate the support you guys give me. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, subscribe. Leave a comment if you wanted to. Tell me what you think of it. Tell me what you want to see of or tell me where you're from. I'd really like to hear from you. I'll definitely reply back as well. And yeah, that's it from me. So I'll see you next time. Don't forget to follow Instagram. Link's down below. Yeah, see you next week. Eww.